if you think you're going to be cool like me and you want to automate your farm, I have one piece of advice for you. Stop. Don't follow me. Don't come this way. Turn around now. Just walk away. Don't even think about it. It's pointless. It's really hard. You won't get there. You have to learn how to code. But seriously, I have been working since 10 a.m. and it is now 7 p.m. It is nine hours. The whole day, sitting here, trying to get this stuff to work. First things first, I want to say a huge thank you to my five patron supporters. Uh, these gentlemen support me on Patreon. They are Andreas, Callum and Matt. Uh, you guys have been here for a while now, so thank you, you three. Um, and some of the newer guys are Jack. Jack's very generous, he's jumped on board, and Tom. And Tom has been extremely generous, and he joined up in the last few days. So thank you, gentlemen. You know, it's you guys. You, you guys are kind of like, like, like if I was a starving vulture, you'd be my carrion. You know, that's what it feels like to me. And it feels really good. So thank you. So if we have a quick look out here, you'll see I have um, taken apart my PID, which was connected to my CO2 transmitter. The CO2 transmitter was just down there on the end. Um, this is the first device which I'm looking to migrate over to uh, Home Assistant. Um, and for me, it was going to be one of the more challenging pieces, and that's why I started with it. But we, we do have uh, that CO2 controller now, feeding its information to the computer, instead of this PID controller here. Now don't get me wrong, PID controllers are brilliant to use for mushroom growing. Um, and a lot of people do use them, and there's nothing wrong with using them. But I simply uh, wanted the functionality of this, um, on my PC inside, and I also want, wanted this device here to be able to control virtually anything um, I'm doing on the mushroom farm. At the moment, this device here, all it would do is kick on the extractor fan, which is down there. It's all it could do, so it wasn't really that smart. Now, with uh, this, the CO2 meter feeding the data to my computer inside, I can have that data kick on uh, any device I want. If you are new to mushroom growing, I do recommend actually setting up PID controllers uh, to manage a lot of your farm. They really uh, make things simple. I also have a uh, percentage controller here, which I use to control the humidity. Um, the only downfall with that there is you do lose um, a bit of fine control of the humidity. And I had, I had a tendency to over humidify the room. So the humidity was often staying too high for too long. Uh, good for pinning. Um, and an in, in, uh, induction of fruiting, but not so good for the actual growing fruit bodies. They do prefer that humidity, humidity to be backed off a bit. So I've just had the biggest oof ever. I'm talking like oof, like a major, major oof. So for 12 hours, I worked on these parts, and I got them working. But then I noticed my CO2 probe is... Uh, Sorry, my CO2 transmitter is throwing out some, some odd readings. Some readings below atmospheric CO2 uh, levels. And I'm wondering what's going on here. And I looked, and I checked, and I realised my CO2 transmitter isn't 4 to 20 milliamp output. It's 0 to 10 volt output. And I've connected it to a 4 to 20 milliamp receiver. Ball breaking, absolutely ball breaking, but it's okay. Because the humidity probe I'm getting is 4 to 20 milliamp receiver, so that can connect to this. It's just this one, can't. So now I need to either figure out how to connect this one to the 4 to 20 milliamp receiver, or figure out how to connect a 0 to 10 volt transmitter into the ESP32 chips which are right here. We'll take you through this anyway, um, just so you can see how I've set it up. And we'll just pretend that this is a 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter. We'll just pretend. This here is the data feed coming off the sensors into the ESP32. And here is the Home Assistant front end. You can see the CO2 reading on the left over here. This should be up around 6 or 700 for being in my office. So it is incorrect. But it's still throwing us back a number. So if I put the correct transmitter on there, it will work. Above it we have some temperature and humidity readouts, 
from a BME280 controller, and the temperature and the humidity in the middle is also from this device. On the right we can see the BME with its pressure there, and the DMT, which is another device but does humidity and temperature as well. You can see the inaccuracy and humidity between these two, it's a 5% uh, percent difference. These are just cheap, and humidity never works on cheap sensors. The temperature is more accurate, they're both within 0.1 degree of each other. And down below I've got a switch where I can turn a simple light on in my room. This isn't the finished product, this is just what I've been working on so far. So here you've got uh, what I thought was my 4 to 20 milliamp receiver, but it's a 0 to 10 volt. Um, but we'll just play pretend for this. It's actually a Dwyer CCT, uh, sorry, CCD, and they're really, uh, Dwyer make really good components, so I like using them. This is connected here to a 4 to 20 milliamp receiver. Um, this device we here, this is four channels, so I can actually run four devices off this. This here then connects into this ESP32 board, which is one of these, it's just mounted on a breadboard, and this device up here powers it. That uh, ESP32 gets the results, the digital results from this, and then that transmit them, transmits them over to uh, my Raspberry Pi here. And that Raspberry Pi there runs home automation software, which my computer up here can uh, connect to. So it is a shame that this actually, this one here isn't the right type of transmitter for this board. Um, I really genuinely thought this was a 4 to 20 milliamp, but I was wrong. I was really wrong. And it hurts. It hurts deeply.